Welcome back to Gay Side Stories, where the gay shit goes. I am your host, Trillificent. Thank you so much for joining me for another week. Make sure you guys are subscribed on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, or whatever podcast app you choose to use. Please make sure you are using the hashtag GaySidePod when you live tweet or post about the show. And so people can find this queer POC led show, please use the hashtag PodsByQPOC. Make sure you send in any letters, um, requests for advice, or anything that you want to say to me to GaySideStories at gmail.com. Before we get started, I wanted to read a recent review I received on Apple Podcasts. It's from user Mtera, and it said, I started listening to your podcast about six months ago. Personally, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have been able to have a better relationship with one of my frat brothers, who is part of the queer community. I can't thank you enough for just being honest and inviting great guests to be honest as well. It really helped me grow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for the review and the kind words. Things like this are the reason why I do this show. So I'm glad to see some good come of me getting on the microphone and just blabbering, to be quite honest. So please continue listening. And if you have any other feedback, please let me know. And I think that's it. We're going to go ahead and start the show. Enjoy, you guys. All right. New show, new guest. So this week I have with me Dr. Pookie from the Sexual Healing Podcast. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Why don't you tell my listeners a little bit about the Sexual Healing Podcast? Oh, I'm happy you asked. So we are um, basically the Sexual Healing Podcast is... Life uh, from the perspective of myself and my co-host, Dark Boy, um, from our perspectives as uh, two black gay men in our 40s, uh, we really kind of looked at what could we contribute to the podcast world because we both are podcast junkies. And I, you know, I said to him, I was like, you know, we're basically becoming some old hoes and, <laughs> and we got some things to share with the younger ones because we see them out there doing their thing. And we're like, baby, why are you doing that? And sometimes they listen, other times they don't. So we just thought we'd put that on, you know, on the record. So it really, you could see our fuck-ups and the fact that we're still here. (laughs) We survived them. Um, And that some of the shit you're trying to do, we already did it, just like your parents would tell you. You know, that shit you're trying to do at 15, I already did it and did it better than you. So it's it's that kind of concept, but mostly giving back in some way. Yeah, so we, you know, we're coming. We come out every Wednesday, uh, hopefully in the morning. But you know, life. So, yeah, <laughs> life be life, and oh, it does. It wears a brother down. Yes, yeah. Indeed. So all right. So um, the links to that podcast will definitely be in the show notes, so you guys can check it out mm-hmm. and hear the perspective of some forty-something black gay men. It's interesting. To say the least. Yeah. So speaking of interesting, let's slide on into the queer query so we can learn a little bit more about you and by extension me. Question. All right. So first question. If you could hire a celebrity chef to cook for you for the rest of your days, who -hmm. would it be? So I have a question for clarification on this because I have two answers depending on your answer. Is this chef only cooking or are we fucking too? That depends on who you want to be in your house. <laughs> I mean, oh, let two... me. OK, so let me answer first and that'll, that'll okay. give you clarification. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so if I could hire a celebrity chef to cook for me, it would be Chef Eddie Jackson. His mm. at name on Instagram is at Fit Chef Eddie. I and think I've heard of him. he is a fine, dark-skinned former football player with ties to Houston. He used to have a food truck here, and he can cook. So, oh, yes. He was on somebody's show once. Yeah, he's been on different Food Network shows. I think he may have been on one of those competition shows and won. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's been on like a barbecue show. He's, you know, he's been on a, a few of those shows, which okay. he should be easy to point out because, you know, they don't have that many black people. That's true. And yeah. he's, he's bald headed and he looks like he's in his mid thirties. So mm-hmm. you would definitely That's... know him. But like I said, his, at his Instagram at is fit chef Eddie. And I mean, if we like, look, listen, he can serve me noodles and then I'll serve okay. his noodle after. There you go. Okay, so if we serve in and eat noodles, um, I'm it's up gonna to have you. To go. You don't necessarily have to. If you want Ina Garden to come in, well, I now I love the Contessa. I do. That's my girl. I have learned lots of things from her. But if somebody gonna feed me and we fucking, I gotta go with G Garvin. Okay, that was gonna be my honorable mention. No, no yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah, the first time I saw that brother, I was like, okay. And I, I like the way he cooks. I feel like he would be very conscientious in intending to my dietary needs. And he ain't difficult to look at in the least. In the least. Uh, He's very yeah. meticulous, so it makes it seem it makes you feel like you would be well taken care of in the bedroom mm-hmm. too. I I, oh, I yes. I'm getting what you're putting down. Yeah, he, he seems hungry. Like he doesn't leave a morsel on the plate. So if I put on some clean draws, you know, he would handle that. Or not. Or not, yeah. I mean, he might just push him to the side. Who knows? Listen, I mean, I'm just saying, he might be tired of dealing with utensils, so why have draws on at all? That's it. Well, you know, I like a nice pair of draws to add some flavor to the pot, but if you just want to have raw ingredients, I'm cool with that, too. Listen, farm to table, okay? Oh, there it is, <laughs> yes. Farm to sticky table. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> I have problems. We know this. this just nasty. Okay, okay. Next question. Okay. Do you have a quote? We ain't getting no younger, so we might as well do it, friend. Mm, officially, no, I do not. Um, I suspect that I may have one or two in their mind, but we've not discussed it. When I think about this question, though, there is a gentleman that I met one night out and about um, whom I had seen at the gym and a couple other places. And he happened to put me in a little grip between his thighs and worked on my nipples for about 45 minutes. And, you know, yeah, that was and you you heard the wedding march. Got it. I yeah, I heard. But it was like it wasn't like the the. A classical march. It was very much like, you know, Luke Skywalker, not Luke Skywalker, uh, Luke Campbell, you know, some booty music. Okay. Coming I was about to, I was, that's where I was going. I was like, it must have been some Dr. Luke wedding music. Yes, it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I was, you know, I was scarred and yeah, was was some doo doo brown. Exactly. Because that brother, he is hot. He's still around town. I see him from time to time, but. Because my nipples have never really done a whole lot, and he brought them to life. He squeezed some life into them. He, he gave your nipples the evanescence treatment. He did he bring them and to I, life. I'm not mad at that. I know. I was. I forgot what I was seeing while he was working on me, but it was listen, peace. <laughs> listen, peace, love, and blessings to any man out there that mm-hmm. will work on the nipples unless he a fuck boy and in which case do what you do but no no love and blessings to you exactly um, and just yeah you know. let's see so what about you so i have someone in mind i feel like i've okay. answered this question on the show before but oh well hmm. but i okay. definitely i have one in mind but i doubt i'm his 10 year plan friend and i've never okay. like it's not official i've never discussed it with them and anything like that but it just always makes me think about that like is that a real thing do people do that or it's just kind of like so listen we friends and i love you and Mm -hmm. you know if we both hit 42 and a half and we we still single it's like i mean is you trying to go half on these bills or no like and knowing see, me, that's I would be it. like, knowing me, I would be like, I mean, not much has to change. I mean, if you want to get married so we can get some tax breaks, that's cool. Mm-hmm. And you can still have your, your boyfriends and your orgies or whatever you do. You know, if we happen to have sex every now and then, cool. If not, cool. Mm-hmm. But this, oh, these yeah. bills. <laughs> Basically, yeah. 
be these, like uh, these bills, these coins. You, you know, know what I'm saying the this this insurance. <laughs> you know what Ooh, I'm this this car note. You know these these uh, taxes. What's oh up God, with taxes. the what's up? You know what's up with life insurance? Like, yeah, I I need to be the beneficiary. Um. No, but you, you know, take good care of yourself. You know yeah, that's yeah. It. Okay, so let's move okay. on. You have yes questions, so let's hear them. Okay, so the first question was, what are one or two songs that best describe the highs, or when you're at your high, and when you're at your low? Um, so these are not definitive answers, but these were okay. the first songs that came to mind. Mm-hmm. So for the low. It's a song called Chop Suey by uh, System of a Down. Oh, wow. It's a rock song. It's like a rock group. And uh, the reason why, because there's a line in the song that says, I cry when angels deserve to die. Mm. And I don't know. There's just something about that song. Like when I'm not feeling it, it being Mm. life or coworkers or family or, you know, somebody's son who nutted in one of my rags oh okay yeah i can listen to this song and probably a few of their other songs like that's my my funky mood music okay Hmm. on the flip side for the high um there's a song that was not on her album it's like one of those b-side type songs Mm -hmm. it's called lay up under me by beyonce it's oh. from the four era when she was okay. doing her good singing like a good good singing I mean cause she always uh-huh. does good singing but you know four was like y'all clearly have forgotten that I can sing um, yeah that's when she was still catching shit about her voice too yeah yeah so yeah. that was when you know countdown and uh, love on top which mm, oh okay listen if it, mm-hmm. listen, love on top is a good way to t- to shut people up who are trying to tell you you can't sing. But anyway, <laughs> it is. It's a good modulation story. Uh, but yeah, there's a song on there called "Lay Up Under Me," where basically it's like you don't got to go out to the club, just lay up under me tonight. Mm-hmm. And I just like that song. It just makes me feel good. Like if I get in the car and the shuffle's like, "Here you go," I'm like, "Thank you." You know what I'm saying? Like I'll be in the car rocking, acting like I can really sing, and they're screeching like a little pterodactyl and shit. <laughs> yeah. It's just good shit. I like okay. that song. And I mean, there's probably tons of other songs that emote or bring out different types of emotions. But mm-hmm. those two kind of stuck out when I was trying to do like a rapid fire answer of the question. Uh, okay. But what about you? Uh, so my high um, staying in the Beyonce uh, canon would be Freakum Dress. Okay. Uh, it's just you know, it's just one. Of, I every time I hear it, I go to twerking and shaking my ass, and you know, um, and it's just this whole idea of I'm a bad bitch and I know it, yep. and and this totally, dress gonna show it. <laughs> that's it. It's gonna call all the boys to the yard, and they'll be all right. Um, Here for and it. yeah, and and then for the low, because I really only one song came to mind. I listen to a lot of like old school R and B soul, so. I, you know, my shit be all toe up. Um, but the song that immediately jumped out at me was Giving Up by Donny Hathaway. Mm. Uh, that's just some painful, like, get me a razor blade music. Um, but it's so yeah. fucking good, you know, and you just feel that pain. Um, yeah, the title and, alone. Ooh. Yes. Just, you know, talking about his love and faith in the girl to bring her back someday. And I'm like, you sure? <laughs> it's just right. Like, Right, but and I typically don't take that to be at least for me about a literal person. It's more of like an idea. It's more about something that I thought was going to happen and it didn't, and I'm disappointed. Um, you know, a failure that I'm like, I got to process this shit and live with it, and I'll be all right tomorrow. You know, I might have to pull out some Donnie. Um, and the other one is more defiant and angry. Was uh, Thieves in the Temple by Prince, the extended mm. mix. Um, the one with the video that's longer and it's all the instrumental at the end. Mm-hmm. Love that fucking song. It's just, you know. <laughs> you said that's for the low? Yeah, that's a low. Okay. Yeah, that's when I'm pissed off. I <laughs> usually got into a pretty bad argument with somebody or 
when I was an employee, um, you know, some bitch at the job and pissed me off. Hmm. Uh, they good for that. Yeah, that's I'm a terrible employee right now. I've been one for. Ooh, yeah, I decided I was psychologically unemployable back in 2000. <laughs> so same. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just like so. I've been largely self-employed since then, but you know, not always. Gotcha. Okay, so yeah. to wrap it up, what's the last question? Last question: uh, What are three things you would not do for a billion dollars? Um, this is not a comprehensive list. I, I understand. I want to put that out there. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not eating boo boo. That's mine too. I'm just. I'm just. I don't feel like it's worth it. Like, yes, that would be great, but I feel like I probably would die if I did that. The memories, the nightmares. And so keep look, put a pin in that. Okay. <laughs> so the next thing is I'm not fucking a blood relative. Okay. Because the memories and the nightmares. Mm-hmm. I don't want to have to burn through so much money trying to forget the pain. <laughs> That's it. And the last thing was killing a baby or a child. Oh, okay. I don't think I could do that. Or I don't think I would do that for a billion dollars. Now, okay. if you're a grown as adult, um, <laughs> you thinking about it? I don't have to think about it because it ain't on the list. <laughs> oh, damn. Okay. I mean, I'm a, uh, I'll try not to have to do that, but listen. A billion dollars, like, listen, your family can get a set. No, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I'll write y'all a check. Um, okay, but yeah, like I said, this is not a comprehensive list. But the main thing is, I feel like I, they, these three things in particular, I felt like I would not be able to enjoy the money because I would be traumatized. And the first one, I literally feel like there's a distinct possibility that I would die. Mm-hmm. Okay, so or at least feel like you wanted to. I mean, you you'll feel like you want to while you're doing it, but mm-hmm. you know, um, you there there are diseases that you can get from doing exactly from that make you feel like you'd rather be dead. Yeah, it's, or you could yeah. die. I mean, you never know how your body's gonna react to some shit. So yeah, that's true. I don't want to take that that chance. Now, if we talking about being boo booed on in Dubai, mm-hmm. that's different because I can take a shower. Or seven. That's true. You yeah, know what I'm saying? But... I can take a bath. I can get a seaweed wrap. I can do a lot of things. And spend some time on the couch with a the therapist. Well, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know what that experience would be like because I feel like that's something that I probably could like be out of body <laughs> and be like, just get this shit over with, literally and figuratively, so that well, <laughs> I can get my can... money. I will just say that I was once assaulted on Tumblr by a stealthy scat film, and it still haunts me. <laughs> you know, I don't like, listen. I was way more because I've come across that, and I'm like gross. I've come across that in like comics too. Yeah. Um, but I was way more fucked with when I accidentally watched like this video of these dudes trying to fuck a horse, or oh. let me rephrase, trying to be fucked by a horse yes oh god I went on a whole tirade on I think this was my last twitter account and I was like y'all need to label your fucking porn correctly cause there's yeah. no reason why I should click play and Mr. Ed is trying to get into some human cheeks that's just not anyway what What are your answers cause this is too much <laughs> the trauma the trauma uh, jumped yeah. out <laughs> yeah the trauma I understand yeah actually I mean the first thing for me was eat shit as well the second one, I just said kill someone because, again, the trauma. Oh. Um, <laughs> yours, was just, gen- yours was generic. Mine was like, yeah, I believe but, the children are our future, so they good. But everybody else, I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, when I process through some folk and just some story ideas that come up, there are some folks I would probably, I'd find a way to be all right killing their ass, um, particularly if I'm getting paid. Uh, the last one was to actually give up my families. Mm. Okay. You know, so just the idea of I'll give you this if you basically 
cut these people out of your life or you walk out of theirs. Oh, listen. Ooh, there will be some mad people at me. They didn't already got cut off. You giving me a billion dollars too? <laughs> See ya. Well, well, yeah, I, yeah, I know. I, and I definitely, my history is a little different uh, with my family because we're pretty tight knit bunch. So I would definitely, I'd be, I don't know if it would be worth it. That's I mean, fair. I, you know, I could probably take that billion and try to find ways to do an end around, but yeah, it'd be hard. Listen, because my dumb ass would be like, okay, so this is what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. I'm going to cut y'all off. But then mm-hmm. y'all going to go into witness protection and get new identity. <laughs> That's it. And the check will be waiting. <laughs> no, like, I'm going to take care of y'all. Give me the check first. Oh, well, yeah, that's true. And then y'all go get new identities. We're going to move to a different. Anyway, anyway. So that was a pretty mm-hmm. interesting question. I'm curious to see um, if you want to give us your three things you would not do for a billion dollars. I would love to see what you have to say. You can tweet the show or tweet us individually. Mm-hmm. And that's going to wrap up the queer query a little bit extended. But um, yes, I enjoyed it. It was fun. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that chef fantasy. Listen, Oof. Chef Eddie, how you doing? Anyway, yeah, I'm a good film. So the main topic for this week. <laughs> we're going to be talking about sex positivity and a little bit on how the LGBT community, specifically gay men, because we are two gay men. Mm-hmm. Um, how they relate to sex just a little bit. So let's okay. start off with the sex positivity. Yes. So I think one of the first things that hinders people from being sex positive is that they repress themselves sexually. So I wanted to know your thoughts on that. If you agree and why or why not? Like, do you think they still do that? Yeah, I do. Uh, and I think it varies throughout the lifespan. I, I think depending on our circumstances like before you come out you know you might you do all the stuff that boys do showing you know show me yours i'll show you mine circle jerk all that good stuff um you know maybe even you know suck a little titty and you know a hand job blow job you know under bleachers kind of deal i think that if there isn't a lot of shame attached at that point then then there isn't much repression but i do feel like again we're still very much a Puritan influenced Victorian type of society that's still coming to grips with sex in general. Um, it's just this idea if it feels too good, it's bad for you. So I think that certainly when we come out as as young gay men, you know, we go through our whole phase if we're lucky. Um, and we're even luckier if we come out of it without any STDs that stick around. Um, you know, and so... I do think that it's really an individual thing. Um, some people are just okay with having sex and actually owning up to it. And they might love sex, but they don't want anyone to know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've gone through phases with that where I'm just like, ooh, you're doing too much now. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, we, folks can know you a hoe, but you don't need to confirm it. You know <laughs> That kind of thing. And 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 I've said, well, what's what's that about? Like, the reality is I rather enjoy sex, and so do other people, and I'm sure everyone is doing something that they either are quote-unquote ashamed of or don't want everybody knowing about. Um, but I, I do think that people, they do still repress. Mm-hmm. There's always that man that we're like, oh, he looked good. I should, you know. And then you don't. You don't go after him or you find a way to blow it or sabotage it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I agree, obviously. I think people do Mm -hmm. still repress themselves sexually and it manifests itself in different ways. Mm -hmm. I feel like the climate has definitely improved even from when I was a teenager of Mm -hmm. just being able to be a little bit open with your sexuality, whether you're gay or heterosexual, you know, different gender identities all Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff it's improved but we have to be honest about it the dark sides of some of the undesirable thought processes like toxic masculinity 
uh, patriarchy, homophobia, transphobia, biphobia, misogyny, you know, when it comes mm-hmm. to women. And there's more, but I feel like a lot of those things are what keeps people repressed. Mm-hmm. And especially when they see those type of, I'm going to call them negative values, upheld by close friends and families. A good example that I could say is you think about the men who like and enjoy trans women, but they do it on the low and they rep- or they repress it all together mm-hmm. because not because they're scared of what they're feeling, but because they're scared of being judged. They're scared of their homeboys calling them gay or something. They're scared of being mis- dis- uh, disowned by a family. Mm-hmm. Because I'm, mean, who knows? I don't even know what people say in those situations, other than "oh, you just gay" or something like that, yeah. or the 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 inherited trauma of someone trying to tell you that's a man. You know what I'm saying? Like that. If you've gotten in your head, this is the woman, and this is a woman that I enjoy and I like, and then you have someone trying to tell you otherwise. Mm-hmm. It just fucks you up. And like I said, the other things, you know, there's bisexual, mostly I would say, or a good, I won't say mostly, but a good portion of men who have to repress themselves. Cause again, everybody, including gay men or people in the community who you think would be more understanding. I mean, there is a B in our acronym, but mm-hmm. they're biphobic, you know, oh, totally. I, I imagine being by bi- a bisexual man trying to live your best life and you have gay men trying to tell you bisexuality doesn't exist. Yeah, and I think that really, I think a lot of that phobia comes out of just, you can't possibly, because so many people are in their mind wired one way or the other. And they feel like you can't possibly be open in that way. You're just being dishonest. You're just greedy. And I think there's a certain amount of jealousy in there. There's, it's jealousy. There's ignorance mostly Mm -hmm. i think and i think when it comes to gay men a lot of times if they're allegedly confident in what they have going on Mm -hmm. they they don't have or they lose the ability to be empathetic to people who are trying to do the same thing so it's like if i've walked and I've learned how to walk in my truth and say my truth and et cetera, et cetera. You being bisexual, why can't you do the same thing? Or mm-hmm. it's because we've all had someone close to us or whatever who has used the label of bisexual as a stepping stone to coming out as gay. That's true. Um, yeah, I know I did. But there are people who actually identify as this and other things but i feel like again it's that the stigma that comes with it and that's to me a big reason why someone would repress their sexuality or go to greater lengths to hide Mm -hmm. it because there's a difference between being private and hiding Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like it's one thing to be like okay yeah, I do what I do, but y'all don't need to know the any the inner workings. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? You don't need to know what my booty hole look like. You don't need to know what my chocolate starfish yes, looks like. <laughs> Shout out to mm-hmm. that one meme that I saw. Oh, I haven't said, I hadn't heard that before. Chocolate starfish. I was too Ooh. through. Okay. That's but, better than balloon knot. Yeah. And but you know what I'm saying? There's a difference between that mm-hmm. and and being like I hide everything that I'm doing. Nobody knows anything mm-hmm. because those are the people who kind of like, you know, I'll, those are the people who are kind of dangerous because they are trying to hide to the point where it's like, I would rather cause you physical harm than have my secret out. But anyway, there's mm-hmm. a lot of reasons why people repress themselves sexually. You know, I did, we didn't even get into like the religious aspects of it. Yeah, I feel like, but I felt like that was fruit. exactly it was kind of a given. Mm-hmm. Although I, I definitely, I, I think the thing that's probably most unsettling about the repression is the self injurious behavior that comes with it. You know, the substance abuse, the totally engaging in in particularly high risk sex, 
whether it be unpretentious sex or sex with strangers. You know, I had one friend who used to go to this biker bar and pick up the roughest piece of trade in there. And he'd be like, oh, child, I didn't get killed last night. I'm just like, okay. You know, I'm just yeah. like, why are you? And then his, but his reputation with everyone else in his life was that, oh, he's very chaste. You know, he's waiting on the right guy. I'm like, no, he's fucking out of both draws legs. <laughs> and it's not like there's anything wrong with that, but it's ridiculous to me that I get to hear the truth and all this stuff you're doing that's really traumatizing to me to hear it. You know, but I'm your friend, so I'm going to be there for you. But damn. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and so I'm sitting here in the Twilight Zone because everyone else is walking around talking about somebody totally different from who I know. Um, So let's shift gears a little bit. Mm -hmm. Talking about sex positivity. But do you think that it still has a stigma and that people still equate being sex positive with just being a hoe? By and large, sadly, yes. Um, there's actually a group in L.A. called Sex Positive L.A., and I've been invited to attend their meetings, um, and I've not made it up there yet because I just, child, I can't do L.A. It's too, it's <laughs> too many traffic bottlenecks, and, you know, and I'm busy. But it, it's, um, I would say within communities of color, definitely, um, being in tune with your sexuality, seeing yourself as a sexual being and that being a proud and pivotal part of who you are, that is definitely frowned upon. Um, whether it be by your family, whether it be by a lot of your friends, either because they are jealous that they don't have that mindset or they feel like you're doing too much. Um, and I do, when I think about yeah, when you talk about, I mentioned going to sex positive to the group with someone, they'd be like, oh, child, they be having orgies. And I just said, no, they. this is a meeting of them. This is just a meet and greet. There's no orgy going on. I might get invited to one. And if the right invitation, then yeah, I'll go, you know. <laughs> it's just like, they looked at me like I had just like called their mama, uh, you know, a big biscuit eating bitch, you know. And, mm -hmm. and I was just like, what? And they're just like, you would go to an orgy? And I'm like, uh, yeah, if it was if it was folks that I wanted to orge with, yes, <laughs> I would go. I have gone before. And so, hell, I even hosted a sex party once in my house. So it, it works. It's just, yeah, you know, it was, and I was a very meticulous host. <laughs> so I bet you were. <laughs> meticulous. I, oh, I, I, had, I had the drinks and, and the appetizers. I had gloves if you, you know, to handle the finger foods if you need, you know. Mm. Um, yeah. <laughs> finger foods. <laughs> I had spaces set up for people and proclivities, and I made sure the bathroom stayed stocked and tidy. Um, so, yeah, I was a very good host. And I mean, I and I said to a friend of mine once, like, yeah, I hosted a sex party. He's like, oh, that was just too hoish for me. And I was like, damn. You know, <laughs> Like, why is it hoish? You got a group of people of like minds getting together and having fun. Do you not have sex? Right. And it's always like, but well, not like that. And, you know, my faith, I, you know, I've reconciled having some sex, but I can't get crazy with it. And I'm just like, sex is sex, y'all. But it's like, then you have to ask, why does your faith and how you choose to sex or not sex have mm -hmm. to apply to anyone else Ooh, that's know? the question but that's one of the hard hitting questions that people don't like to answer mm -hmm. um I would say I agree too that people do equate sex positivity with just wanting to be a hoe and be free and not have responsibility and all of all of the weird things that they think being a hoe is outside of just enjoying sex Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. and I think that there are different rules when it comes to different people I was gonna say for example for women but mm -hmm. while you were telling your story I started thinking about it and I would say number one I think there are different rules for the receptive partner regardless oh, of gender definitely. yes <laughs> but I thought about it a little bit more and I realized there's also different rules 
depending on degrees of perceived attractiveness. Oh, yeah. Because a nice looking man is going to be, in my experience and in my observation, Mm -hmm. is going to have a less likely chance of being called a hoe than someone who maybe not, who's not as conventionally attractive. Unless they call themselves a hoe. Then it's like, yeah, okay, it's cool. You, at least it's kind of like, oh, at least you know you're a hoe. You know what I'm saying? Or it could be the, because there's two people. It could be that, or it could be the opposite, where it's like, you so fine or you so pretty that I know you can't be nothing but a hoe. Yeah. You know, which is, I think is probably a little bit more common. Or probably way well, more yeah, common. It's being thrown at them, definitely. Because there's just this people have this thing in their mind and they have this weird relationship with sex and attractiveness or people automatically assume if you just are fine out of control fine or even if they keep it on a personal level like you're fine to the point where I you know I would like to take a ride Mm -hmm. they can't equate that with anything other than if I think you look good and I want to sit on your face then tons of people must want to sit on your face and you let them because you mm. you get to take advantage of that situation. Yeah. You know, there's Projecting. a lot of projection. <laughs> but, but a lot of projection. But I think the main thing is just that that difference between being the receptive partner and the mm-hmm. giving partner. Like, I know on Twitter and everything, like, it's you see it sometimes people making jokes or whatever trying to call men hoes or try to call tops hoes but Mm -hmm. by far I feel like that label is taken seriously and it sticks to you know people who take dick women men that are bottoms and everything else it's kind of like if I take if you take dick if you take too much dick then you a hoe like to sum it up, you yeah. know that saying and that meme, someone made a meme out of this saying, but the saying is old about um, the locks and the keys and if one key can unlock multiple locks then it's cool because mm-hmm. it's a master key Oh, but a lock that can be unlocked by multiple keys is a problem Ooh, a faulty lock, yes. Basically, I, is what they're saying. Now, I paraphrase, obviously, mm-hmm. but but I got the idea. I've seen well, that before, and they mm-hmm. make that. And <laughs> I remember I saw it on Facebook, and someone was like, "I'm a woman, not a lock." Like, what the fuck is you even saying? <laughs> oh, with all that, you know, that's this hetero double standard thing. Mm. But it's also I always think about the term community dick, <clears throat> right? You know, where it's just like, oh, everybody working on that dick. And it's like, okay, but it's providing a service as opposed to just, you know, some pussy getting used. But at the same time, it's like, okay, but is the term community dick taken in such a negative way as a hoe when it's being labeled Mm -hmm. as on a bottom? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think those don't hold the same weight, at least not from what I've seen. No, and I mean, that's what I say about the community dick thing as opposed to just, you know... Yeah, that loose bussy. Um, because someone being like, oh, he got community dick, that ain't stopping nobody from nope. hopping in line. <laughs> the community now knows about it, and they go seek it out. Exactly. That, that, yeah, that, it's that's valued. Not, that's not stopping nobody from being like, I, too, am part of the community. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's amazing how quickly men will, you know, quote-unquote top-identified men will slide into that that idea of, okay, my bottom bed not be giving it to nobody else. And and I'm always just like, you do realize that's another man. I was like, the, the sexist double standard is bullshit anyway, but for you to apply it to another man is even more absurd. <laughs> but well, they they do it and are indignant about it. Yeah, I mean, but Indig- the the weird relationship between heteronormativity and men and oh, listen, now that's a can of worms. I know I talked about whole, it a little yeah. bit on a previous episode, but there's mm-hmm. there's a lot that we could talk about there. So before oh, yeah. we switch gears, the last question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So what are some examples of how you are po- sex positive and how you promote sex positivity that people could adapt? Um. Well, for me, I've always been very drawn to sex, not just as an activity, but also as a discipline. 
So I've been reading about sex since I was sneaking my mama's Playgirls back when I was five. Come on, pl- come uh, on, mama with the Playgirl. Oh yeah, she had her Playgirls. Mama got to like, have Ooh. a life too. Yeah, oh no, she she had a subscription as far as I knew, um, and I had my favorites in there too. Uh, mm. So for me, I've always appreciated the body and what it can do. So I. I'm typically interested in sex. I'm usually the person accused of going too far with asking questions or disclosing too much. Um, but for me, I just feel like, hell, I did it. Or I, you know, or I didn't do it. Um, and I think as I've gotten a little older in the last 10 years, I've gotten less concerned about how I'm perceived because I said I sucked a dick last week. You know, I'm like, what? It's like, you know... <laughs> So I think certainly certain ways that I'm more examples of it is just really being open to learning about sex, not hiding from anything. So if there are fantasies that you have, get into it. Um, Admit it to yourself that you have them. Figure out a way to make them come true. Mm -hmm. Be honest with yourself about how you do feel about it. Um, face any sort of fear and anxiety you have about this fantasy or asking someone for it and just say, okay, but this is what I want, so I'm going to do it anyway. And that's how I approach sex, and that's how I've added to my catalog of activities and expertise. Um, you know, when I, in my younger days, I had a stable of specialists, as I called them, and they all had a particular talent that they did very well. And come on, roster, you know, yeah. And I was, you know, and and in my mind, you know, I was I was heavier back then, you know, and somebody's like, wait, you had a collection? I said, yes. They're like, how you do that? I was like, I asked for what I wanted, Hmm. you know, and so and they were confidence is really attractive. And a lot of people will totally have a sexual conversation with you that is not overtly sexual, like where they're trying to come on to you. It's just a topic of conversation. For me, it's a topic of conversation. And I think the last thing would be really, we started the show, the podcast around this idea because you know it's playing on the sexual healing with Marvin Gaye, but just the idea of if you're honest about the sex that you have and even the biological sex that you are and the fact that it's different from the gender that people try to put on you, it's healing if you actually are honest about that shit. And you start living in your truth, as they like to say, that is where you you start to really get that wisdom. Um, so when we're on the show and we're talking about stuff, I'm like, yeah, I did that. So to me, sex positivity, it's just kind of natural. I am a member of society, so I have my moments where I do kind of like, oh, that was t- I, I told too much there. But now I'll say playfully, yeah, I get on the show and tell all my damn business. Because I'm like, Don't if I'm all. gonna, exactly. I'm like, if you're gonna do the show, if if you're not being real with people, they're gonna smell it. And I don't want to get up there and be fake and have my shit funky. You know, oh, that's a word. Clean. That's a word. Um, you know? for me, listen. Yeah. The number one way that I'm sex positive is that I mind my business. Okay. okay. I tend to my own bussy mileage. That's right. I concern myself with my own dick statements. Okay. And I encourage others to do the same. All right. Uh, I feel like unless you are about to swap fuck faces or if someone is in danger, because Mm -hmm. that is a very real thing. Yeah. Then we don't really need to be judging someone else's sex life. Mm -hmm. I just, and I wish more people could understand that and would adopt it. Even for you, like, we're, we chat back and forth in a DM. I listen mm-hmm. to your show. I've heard some of your stuff. Nothing that you do is any skin off my dick. Mm-hmm. It, it It's not keeping me up at night. It's exactly. not stopping me from getting a check. Yeah, it's not blocking your bag. Yeah, it's not blocking my bag. It's not blocking my bowels. <laughs> you know no. what I'm saying? So it's just like... <laughs> And I apply that to pretty much everyone. Like, I don't, it does not matter to me. Mm -hmm. And I wish more people would find that and be able to do that. So another way, and I think it's the same answer as you, 
this show and it probably in particular this episode but I, I would i would venture to say some of the more sex centric shows mm-hmm. would probably be good examples um and whenever i do the next installment of the sex series where we kind of get into the nitty-gritty of it mm-hmm. no pun intended all right i feel like just as you said to a degree normalizing the conversation about sex and it doesn't necessarily have to be you sitting down with your best friend and she's Mm -hmm. telling you the ins and outs about you know how her husband's bruised her cervix the night before nothing like that but if you can just have a normal ass conversation just in general Mm-hmm. You know, I saw this porno and and they were doing this new technique. Have you ever done it? Have you ever tried it? And then, you know, someone be like, "Now, sis, I was doing yeah. that shit back in 2009. Let me tell you how my <laughs> elbow got stuck in the headboard." You know what I'm saying? Like just normalizing the conversation and it helps so that you're not looking at, "Oh, uh, you a hoe or whatever mm-hmm. the case may be." You could just be like, "I mean, it's a natural function. It's part of life." Yeah. And a lot of people would argue that it's a necessary part of life let's talk a little bit about the community and how it relates to sex i think that's a facet of sex positivity or negativity Mm -hmm. um first i want to know your opinion of the gay community's relation with sex and keep in mind that we're going to talk about um shaming next Mm -hmm. so just your overall opinion how do you feel okay. like gay men feel about sex how do they interact with sex etc cetera, etc cetera? okay well i'll keep it concise i would say that the gay community's relationship with sex is better than most um other demographics mm-hmm. there's i think at the core we're all men we all understand that most of us don't have the restraints that society puts on women around sexuality so if you see somebody you like and you are horny, chances are they might be open to it. Um, I think that despite it being a pretty positive relationship, I do think that it can skew into the unhealthy arena. Mm. And by that, I would say that we kind of assign value to people by how attractive or fuckable they are. Absolutely. Um, Body consciousness and shaming comes in, which I know we're going to talk about. I'll just reference it here. And then also when the when engaging in sex kind of overrules common sense and starts to impact your health and wellness, you know, yeah. you're coming to work fucked up and late that, you know, that kind of and we and the, and the, the marrying of drugs with sex has just been it's scary. Um you know, having a few friends that are actively addicted to crystal meth and ketamine and all kinds of shit. You know, they're just out there doing their thing, and I just pray that they're all right. Yeah, they're on the list every night. You know, you know what? I agree with all of those points, and the only thing I'm going to add is mm-hmm. that, and this is probably true no matter the community, whether it's gay, straight, or otherwise, mm-hmm. is that sex still sells. Oh yes, and it does. That can give you a little bit of insight of our relationship as a society, but specifically with gay men because we know we're hypersexualized already. But then we tend to hypersexualize ourselves, or mm-hmm. we allow certain people outside of the community, you know, promoting their parties and things mm-hmm. of that nature to hypersexualize us and we go with it because we want to see that fine ass dude on Instagram we want to see him in some underwear that shows off his assets Mm -hmm. we want to see him naked we want to see his ass we want to see him bend over we want you know all of that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. so do you remember if on my show I talked about the stripper in DC at Black Gay Pride years ago no the one that beat me upside the head with his dick no oh wait a minute i missed that (laughs) (laughs) okay well i bring it up because this whole idea of sex sells and i i was it was they did it was um the name of the club it used to be tracks so in southeast which is now all level 
for the Washington Nationals but, uh, baseball stadium. But before they tore all that stuff down, during Black Pride, they had a return of tracks. And they had this club that I guess is on the side of where tracks was called the Edge. And then they had the Wet, which was like the bar with the shower shows, the live shower sex shows in it. Mm. And there was a stripper in there who was working, working the bar. And I pulled out like a 50 to get around to drinks for my friends. <laughs> and he thought it was for him. So he did actually, you know, squat down in front of me and put his dick about three inches from my nose. And he was like, wrap it up. And so I was like, well, shit. And so I wrapped his dick up with the 50 and gave it a little tug to make sure everything was securely fastened. And I got quite a bit of his time (laughs) for my 50, including a little quick S&M session and, you know, get slapped upside the head and upside my mouth with a dick and things and this guy next to me was like you know you shouldn't have to pay for that shit and i'm just sitting here like you paying for your drink right is this not a service yeah in in this environment yeah i was like i can pull out some more money you know, I'm on vacation, so I'll pull out some more money. But and my friends are like, "Yeah, why don't we get you a drink? Because you need to cool off." You know, and it, I just found it so interesting that this guy, while we were sitting there, I swear he bought four fifteen dollar cocktails. So he spent more than I did, huh? And yet he's going to give me a hard time because and had I, less fun. Yes, he's yeah. sitting there bitter. If we gonna be honest, <laughs> mm-hmm. you sitting there, you done spent more money and you having less fun. You over there, you mad. Yeah. He's like, you wouldn't have done that if the dick was only six inches. And I said, you sure about that? Oh, then he started projecting. Because for me, myself and I, mm-hmm. I will say that when we start getting up there in inches, that shit is overrated. I'm good, love, enjoy. Mm, I don't know. I like a challenge. All right, you listen. And I have talents. <laughs> Listen, so I'm good. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I'm good. I, I mean, there's yeah. s- certain circumstances I'm going to be like, okay, we're going to make this work. But I need a whole lot more benefit than just getting fucked. Anyway. Okay, fair enough. Your story is a good segue into the last part of this conversation. Mm-hmm. And that is, in your opinion, why do gay men love sex? We know that men love sex. Gay men mm-hmm. love sex sex mm-hmm. but why do they shame it and why do they shame sex workers by ex- extension at the same mm-hmm. time uh i would say it's about desire power and control okay um you know typically if someone is working as a sex worker they either can command a lot of attention because they are conventionally attractive uh-huh. or in the case of of particularly with male sex workers that don't fit this, you know, this, this, this himbot mess, you know, body type, um, might be a little older, might have a belly, you know, beard, whatever it is. They're like, how are you still pulling people? And, and you out there just hoeing, you just doing anything to make money. And it's just like, no, there's a market. Um, but I feel like folks that they'll criticize what they, either cannot do themselves or don't allow themselves to do. Mm -hmm. I also feel like they are more apt to shame sex workers that they are actually attracted to. Mm. Um, Whether it's because they want them and feel like they can't have them. Because even though you think they look a certain way, they're still making their money. So somebody appreciates the way they look. So all of a sudden, even though you think they're unattractive, they're suddenly out of your league. And so you're going to project all your shit onto them. The other side of it is just the fact that they are free to do what the fuck they want. Mm -hmm. And people have a problem with that. Um, You know, and I have to check myself on occasion. I'm just like, okay, you trip it. You know, he is enjoying himself. Ain't got nothing to do with you. Mm-hmm. So why are you like ooh? And in I mean I'm also the person that if I see somebody and they get in a train run on them by four or five guys, I'm like, all right now, work that. That's Listen. like you all right? You need a drink? Exactly. <laughs> like as long as you're not, as long as you're a willing participant, that's it. <laughs> that's yeah, it. I, you need a break? 
you need you need somebody to run interference, you know. I, okay, I was gonna I say no. Nah, I can run interference, but I'm not taking your place. I'm good. <laughs> oh no, I'm not gonna do well, all that now. I haven't well, indulged that fantasy. I mean, uh, but well, you know what? I'm not, I never say never. I think that, and I don't know 100 percent what the root is. This obviously is just my opinion, but I think a lot of that mm-hmm. shame comes from the struggle with puritanical values, mm-hmm. and that could be related to religion. It could be re- just related to how you were raised or how you grew up, because there is a difference between the two. Mm-hmm. Um, it could be like you were saying, it could be desire manifesting itself in weird ways. So it's like, I want this, but I'm too scared to go get it. So now I'm ashamed people for doing it because we see that all the time. We see yes, we do masculine men shaming feminine men for living out loud all the time and I don't think it's any different when it comes to sex mm-hmm. but I definitely feel like a lot of gay men they struggle with those puritanic puritanical values and the most common manifestation is judgment and shame mm-hmm. you know like yeah. a former friend of mine, we used to have this conversation all the time because he had it in his mind that somehow he was better than other bottoms because he could count on one hand or two hands how many partners he had had. Oh, missed out. And I was just like, so what does that get you exactly? Do you get a gold medal? Do you get some kind of deposit in your bank account? How does that make you better than anyone else? Mm-hmm. it's like well I mean because I can just I know who all has been in me and it's like again what are you getting out of that What? how is that a determining factor that makes you better than someone else who may not know mm-hmm. all of the names and social security numbers of everyone who's been inside them mm-hmm. help me understand and he never had a good answer it was always just like oh well I'm not like these other and I'm like so basically you think that you're better because you feel like if their body count is Mm -hmm. more than a two hand counting ordeal then they just are some kind of loose ass hoes and use some kind of puritanical angel Mm -hmm. which is just false yeah which is false you know and if I really felt like reading or if he was getting on my nerves I would be like okay but they out there getting what they want and you sitting here trying to be pure like this is little house on the fucking prairie Mm -hmm. and you lonely you don't have nobody you ain't you yeah you don't have nobody entering you (laughs) yeah that's just little house and scary frankly right and so you sitting here mad about other people who don't know the names or whatever judgment you pass in but they are getting what it is that you want Mm -hmm. but you've decided that what you want has to be in this special arranged package and blessed by Sailor Moon herself Uh oh so now you sitting here you angry unfucked (laughs) (laughs) and that's cause for anger (laughs) and upset (laughs) you know and I'm just like again my question whenever I get into these conversations with someone I'm just like what benefit tell if there's a benefit let me know shit maybe i'm on the wrong side of the goddamn tracks <laughs> yeah, i might be yeah if i'm overlooking something please let me let know let me know but i'm like if there's is there a tangible benefit to you judging someone else for living their mm-hmm. sex life out loud while you are not because mm, i don't okay. see it you just as lonely as anybody else you ain't busting yeah. no nuts just like a whole lot of other people like <laughs> help me understand That's it. you know yeah. so I really definitely feel that but I also feel like I don't know what it is with people but we're talking about gay men and I, I've mm-hmm. seen it just because I've been kind of consuming community more as far as who I interact with or who I follow on Twitter or on Instagram and things of that nature media mm-hmm. and gay men have a real maybe it's just like a tad bit higher than other people it's just this need to be better than mm-hmm. and sex yeah. is an easy way to elevate yourself above others but it, yeah, it goes hand in hand with that puritanical idea that ideology mm-hmm. of I haven't had many partners I'm close to a virgin so that means my stock is higher and truth be told 
I don't know anybody amongst my acquaintance who wants to be fucking with no virgin or anything close to it. To be quite that's honest, I'm gonna be saying. honest. That's a lot of work. I'm gonna be honest. Like y'all out here being like, "Oh, my flower hasn't, you know, the petals haven't been plucked or whatever the fuck sayings y'all like, whatever euphemisms you use for mm-hmm. your anus, or how fresh it is and how you know, it hasn't been touched or it hasn't been poked or whatever the case may be." And I'm just like but is that what these tops want? Because from what I can tell, they just want they want somebody who can take dick. <laughs> Basically, yeah. I, I think I said on our show recently, yeah, when the girl was like, what do I do with my hands when my boyfriend's fucking me? I was like, well. You should have told her to Vogue. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, and I told her, I was like, well, your first responsibility is to take the dick. So it, it's just... It struck me, it, it's always interesting, because I think the last thing that I had in thinking about that and answering that question with sex workers, their level of, of sexual activity and perceived freedom, so to speak, is also really viewed by a lot of folks as irresponsible, because, you know, we're all in this AIDS, HIV era. Right. When the truth and, of the matter is, most of them are... Way more responsible with their sex than people who don't make a career out of it. But go ahead, I just wanted exactly. to point that out. Oh no, it's, and that's the irony of it. It's like even I mean now we're seeing even with prep where you have folks like you know don't be don't be sleeping with them HIV positive men. And I'm like you do realize that statistically speaking, you have a lower chance of contracting HIV from whom, someone who's positive and undetectable than some random stranger that you don't know what their status mm-hmm. is. And I was like, because if you average it all out, you know, it's more than 1%. <laughs> it's like, but it's that thing where it's like they, it's like you want to judge while being ill-informed and having the wool pulled over your eyes. And it's like, that's not how this works, beloved. It's just it cannot work that way because you look yeah. the fuck stupid. Number one, mm-hmm. but number two, you've spread in misinformation because you don't know what you're talking about. Because again, it's that a, a lot of it goes back to that. That whole puritanical idea is rooted in ignorance itself. Mm-hmm. That if Absolutely. I adhere to this set of rules, then I'm going to be better. And I'm not talking about the religious aspect. Y'all know how I feel about that. And I'm not mm-hmm. here to judge anybody's religion. I don't really care. Again, I mind my business, as yes. I stated earlier. <laughs> However, yes. I will say a lot of that stuff manifests itself in that way. And if we're going to be real, mm-hmm. a lot of that stuff, because a lot of us, especially black gays, white gays, I don't really know where they get it. From. Well, I do know where they get it from their whiteness. Mm-hmm. And I feel like black gays and other POC we get it from religion where it's like that's where we're taught to shame people You're mm-hmm. those building blocks of who you are as a person that stuff that you experienced as a child that's where the shame a lot in my opinion is where a lot of it comes from because your earliest examples of shame come from the home how you were mm-hmm. raised and if that yep. involves religion, especially Christianity, a lot of it is there. Hell, mm-hmm. I could. And when I say the home, you think about how many examples of uh, young people that we can think about our parents telling us, oh, don't don't be hanging out with such and such. She just a little fast ass hoe or some shit like that. Oh, definitely. You know what I mean? Like that. Those elements of of sexual hierarchy and shaming all of that stuff is i think ingrained in us from young ages we get that education i mean we learn those dark arts very early right i mean it's and just because yeah i just remember being a kid in church and just the way that some of the women would be looked at or be like mm-hmm. i ain't seen you in a month of sundays and i'm like really i mean a good example of that is at Aretha's funeral, but I don't want to get oh. into that. I'm just going to leave it there. Yeah. We're going to leave that girl's dress alone. I'm just going to leave it there. I'm just saying what you just said, that's a good example. Yep. Point taken. Um, I, and I, I knew I went exactly to what you were talking about, too. Yeah. So to wrap it up, I would say yes. Play with your own squish. No. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, for real. Mind your uh. own, mind your own genitals. Yeah. Unless you and mind the ones of who you're sharing them with, but and but at the end of the day, my final thought, and I'm gonna pass it to you. All right. Your perceived elevation over someone else when it comes to something sexual, whether you don't have as much sex or you feel like you're safer than someone else or whatever weird hurdles and obstacles you put to make yourself better than the next person, you don't actually you're not getting anything out of that. Mm-hmm. I defy Except you delusion. Listen. I defy mm-hmm. you to tell me what type what tangible benefit you're getting out of trying to be better than someone else and judge someone else because of their because they're sex positive because you perceive them to have a lot of sex because you perceive them to enjoy sex more than you what is the tangible benefit are you getting payments are you getting stocks and bonds tell me because <laughs> to me you just look foolish Okay, you know what you said, payments. I would write the pussy payments, but I'll leave that alone. (laughs) You know, I really just need to be used to it. Like, I cannot say anything on Ratchet Ramblers without it coming up. And to have a whole different person who's not even affiliated with that show outside of listening try to pull my hook hard on shit. You know what? That's enough. This show is over. (laughs) No, that is one of my favorites, though. I was like, and, and when she said you can't say it unless you say it like that, I fell out. I just, but yeah, sorry about that. I, I just, just couldn't resist. Mm, mm, mm. But that Ratchet Roundwick was comic gold, though. Well, but thank you know, you. I appreciate yeah. that. I don't know what yeah, the hell not we a problem doing over there, but yeah. So, um, like I said, any final thoughts so we can wrap this up? Uh, I would just say that you know, sex is natural. It generally feels good. It can be a horrible experience if you don't speak up for yourself and, you know, protect your walls, as, as Chalifson, you know, it, it tells you every week. Um, but I think also do the work on yourself to get to, to lose the guilt and the shame around what feels good to you. Because mm-hmm. I'd rather sacrifice the guilt than regret the shit I didn't do. So, you know, I, I just because really all that crap is in your head because what other people got to say about what you do with your body is none of their damn business. Yep. I will say two more things mm-hmm. to and wrap it up. You don't want to be that person portrayed in a gay movie that is in his 70s 80s whatever and the whole movie is about him looking back on all of the things that he didn't do all of the sexual trysts that he wanted to participate in that he didn't listen like you said Mm -hmm. i would rather process whatever shame and guilt i felt than have that regret and to close Mm -hmm. things out i'm gonna say this sex is good Mm -hmm. sex is kind Mm -hmm. And sex is important. It is. So with that being said, Dr. Pookie, thank you so much for joining me. This was a very fun conversation. I was getting my life. Oh, thank you. Um, As was I. I'm a fan, you know. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Tell people where they can find you on the interwebs. Okay. So on the interwebs, I just created a a new Twitter account uh, for myself. It's actually Dr. Pookie. And that's with the Bougetto spelling. So that's uh, D-O-C-T-O-R. That part's normal. The Bougetto is P-O-U-Q-U-I-E. So all one word, Dr. Pookie. You can find me on Twitter. Uh, you can also email me as well at drpookie at gmail.com. And you can find a Sexual Healing Podcast at sexualhealingpod.com. Uh, and we're on all the, the you know... Apple Podcasts and Spotify mm-hmm. and all that good stuff. And also, I'll do a shameless plug. I am going to be rolling out a solo podcast, hopefully in the next two weeks, um, particularly when I can get back into my house. Um, and it'll be titled, Yeah, I Said It. Um, <laughs> Come on. So, <laughs> so we're, um, I will be living into my fantasy of being the black male Dr. Ruth. 
uh, dispensing advice on sex, relationships, and whatever other fuckery comes my way. All right. Well, I'm going to be yeah. looking forward to that. You guys oh, check yeah. out the Sexual Healing Podcast. And I think that's going to wrap things up. Listen, get out there. Bush your nuts. Okay. Okay. Yes. Have fun. But Suck a dick or something. Digger. Another episode in the books, you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, it was a good conversation. I had a lot of fun recording with Dr. Pookie. Remember, you guys can go to GaySideStories.com for more information. Anything that you may have missed during the show or is not in the show notes should be on the website. Make sure you guys email your questions, suggestions, listener letters, or anything like that to GaySideStories at gmail.com. You can follow and interact with the show on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. It's at GaySideStories on all three. Please make sure to... Leave some ratings and some reviews wherever you can. You can do that on the Facebook page, on Apple Podcasts, on Stitcher, and anywhere else. Let me know. Again, thank you so much for listening every week or whenever you get a chance to listen. Because I know sometimes people fall behind on their podcast. So you may not be able to listen to an episode until three weeks after the fact trust me i know i'm currently in that same boat but i thank you for supporting the show nonetheless speaking of support remember you can also find me on ratchet ramblings every week with my friends jeremy and candace so if you want a different side of me or if you just need some mindless whatever to listen to and laugh and hear people talk shit that is definitely a place to get all of those things And to wrap it up, you guys know what I say every week, and I'm going to keep saying it because I feel like it's important. Make sure that you are protecting your walls or they will crumble. And I don't just mean the walls that get penetrated. (laughs) Any wall that you can think of, make sure that you are protecting it. Unless it's like some of those emotional walls that you need to tear down. Um, shout out to, or actually no shout out to Ayanla, but you know, if you're doing that kind of work in therapy, then tear those walls down, but make sure you protect your other walls and I'll see you guys next week.